Hey y'all, it's Laura, and I'm back with a layout for the Coco Vanilla Design Team, and this is for Wedding Wednesday on my channel, and it is featuring a photo of my matron of honor and best man from our wedding. Now, this cut file came from the Silhouette store, and I've had it for quite a while. I'm not really sure who made it. I tried to look it up, couldn't figure it out. I must have cut it out quite a while ago, and uh, it was just sitting on my desk with the stack of cut files that I had pre-cut before giving up my silhouette, and decided to go ahead and get it used. But a couple of these smaller florals were going to be hiding behind my photo, so I decided to go ahead and fussy cut them out and just sort of sprinkle them around this larger piece of a cut file so that I wasn't losing them because they were quite pretty. So I am using the Coco Vanilla Studio More Than Words collection and it has lots of beautiful pinks and grays, a little bit of peach and blue, and touches of yellow. And I thought that would fit quite nicely with this photo, which has a bit of a yellow tint to it just because the church that we got married in has those kind of yellow fluorescent lights. <laughs> so it just, all of the photos have a slight yellowy orange tint to them and this one is no different. So I decided to go ahead, just go with it, just sort of accent it, kind of blend that in a little bit as much as possible with the layout. Uh, now this is also for on Coco Vanilla's uh, blog site, Throwback Thursday. So that's why I'm using an older collection and also an older photo. My husband and I got married uh, almost 13 years ago now, and I am redoing our uh, wedding album with some heavy journaling and lots of really beautiful layouts because when I originally scrapped it right after we got married, it was pretty simple and had a lot of details added in, but no personal journaling at all. And I think I was just trying to get it done. I wanted a beautiful album and I wanted it done. So it's okay, but it, there's no personal journaling, no um, personal experiences, thoughts, anything like that added in. And so I decided I really wanted a an album that had more of that personal touch to it. So I'm going back and just scrapping some of my favorite photos, not all of them, I think there's going to be roughly 20 pages in this album with just some highlights and some personal journaling about the day and about the people that were in our wedding. I am sorry if you can hear a bit of noise in the background. It is sleeting outside. We live in Mississippi and it is sleeting outside. It is 10 degrees. That's real cold, y'all. <laughs> that is 22 degrees below freezing. It's cold. And uh, we're not okay. It's cold. <laughs> we actually got snow this week, which is very unusual for where we live. So now to add some journaling off to the side, I've grabbed a piece of lined paper and a little bit of scrap, and I'm going to create a large journaling spot off to the left. And I am gonna cut that scrap black piece of paper in two and have a very, very thin border on either side of the journaling spot. And I'm going to fill that whole journaling spot in with some comments about how we met both my matron of honor and my husband's best man and uh, what kind of relationship we have with them and I wanted it to be heavily detailed. And so that is why I'm creating such a large journaling spot there. And this just functions too as a border. It gives me a place to set my photo against. And I really like having a border or a boundary that makes sense as a support for my layouts. I tend to start with a fairly linear design and then make it whimsical from there. But I like having that base. In this case, I'm gonna pull out a lot of papers from the six by six paper pad and use them to back this cut file. I've done most of that already, but I did want to add another little strip here between the journaling spot and the photo, just for a little bit of fun and help bring in a little bit of this gray, because I used the same gray wood grain paper for the leaves on the cut file. I know it doesn't look like I've backed that cut file because it is very light, but uh, in the end, it shows up a little bit better. So just going ahead and matting my photo with this beautiful floral paper to help it stand out just a little bit against that pink. And this pink background was just perfect for my bridesmaids dresses. We did have a bit of a bubblegum pink look to the, the wedding. So the girls were in bubblegum pink and the boys were in uh, silver and gray. 
And so together it was a beautiful, beautiful color scheme and we had a bit of an early in the day wedding. So it worked out quite nicely. So I am gonna use some of these chipboard titles and I decided to go with happy and sweet. I didn't wanna use anything that was too lovey-dovey because these two are not together. They are completely <laughs> separate groups of our friends. And uh, my matron of honor was a coworker at the time and uh, my husband's best man was someone he went to school with. So they didn't know each other prior to our wedding planning. And I thought just picking something that was kind of nice and you know, just gentle, but nothing too romantic because that doesn't really fit the photos. Uh, then I'm coming in with the embellishment. So I had a lot of die cuts and I wanted to add the florals to the cut file to kind of dress it up a little bit. The two larger florals there have an opening in the center that has that pink popping through and I really wanted a little bit more interest there. And so I am going to bring in some die cut florals on top of those. They're a little bit smaller so they don't completely overlap the cut file but they just kind of add to it. I will end up putting those up onto pop dots as well to make them a little bit taller and stick up a little bit like foam would. Uh, so it will be adding a little bit of dimension to the cut file. And I really think that this helps to dress it up and make it look like more than just a background. It is an actual embellishment cluster next to my photo. And I really like the way that that looks. Now I'm gonna bring in some teeny, teeny, tiny little flowers that I fussy cut out from the die cuts as well and sort of sprinkle those around the outside of the cut file as well as some butterflies. And of course, we'll do butterfly trails behind them because I can't help myself. I just love the way that looks. So tucking in the bits and pieces, I will start gluing everything down, mostly off camera. And I really, really like how this one came out. It's very soft and elegant and beautiful and that is exactly what I was going for. Now I do want to mention that I did create a sketch based on this finished layout to help you lift it and so you can see kind of what the different layers are and how they fit together. That is at the end of the video as well as up on the blog at cocovanilla.com.au and you feel free to use that as you like to uh, go ahead and create your own version of this layout. We would love to see that in the Coco Vanilla Studio Facebook group. I believe it's called Coco Vanilla Studio Community and it is a fantastic burst of inspiration as soon as you join and you get to see what everybody else is using their collections to make and I have found a lot a lot of beautiful layouts in there that have inspired me to create something new and different and uh, that has been a really really good source of inspiration for me for sure. So yeah, just adding little bits and pieces around this floral. I call this part scattering and I do a bit of scattering and splattering at the end of every layout that I create. And the scattering is always my favorite part. Adding in those tiny little details, things like tabs and just a couple little banners, uh, tiny little florals or small shapes scattered around the main cluster just brings me so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> I love adding those little details and I think it really takes a layout from looking pretty to looking really beautiful. Uh, so lots of tiny little fussy cut florals. Some of these were in the die cut pack and I just cut out the white border. Uh, some of them may have been in the papers and I fussy cut them out. I am a big fan of fussy cutting and use it quite often to create my layouts, especially florals. I am a huge fan of florals and fussy cutting allows me to bring them in and cluster them together really well. Whereas having a white border I find just sort of stops me a little bit. I really like having a nice clean finish and when clustering together, multiple florals are just look like the clean look of no white border. So bringing in some of these butterflies that I've also fussy cut from some of the pattern paper, I'm gonna sprinkle these around and I love using butterflies to add a feeling of movement to the page. And the way I'm gonna do that is by adding a little bit of Nouveau drops behind them to create little dot trails. And that just, like I said, gives the impression of movement and um, kind of guides your eye through the layout as a whole because there are three of them. They kind of make you want to look from one to one to one, which guides you from the top down to the bottom of the layout. I'm also going to add a little arrow up here at the top of the journaling just to fill in that empty space and give it a little bit of interest. And then of course my Nouveau drops. I also put Nouveau drops in the center of the florals on the 
the cut file just because I thought they needed a little extra jazzing up, something a little bit special. And then I'll come in with some Heidi Swap Color Shine to splatter around the edges as well. So scattering and splattering once done, we'll finish up this layout. I do hope you'll check out the still photos at the end as well as the blog at cocovanilla.com.au and let me know what you think about this layout. I've really, really enjoyed doing this one. I think it turned out really lovely and soft and beautiful and just perfect for my wedding album. Just to finish up this layout, how about a quick question? Do you add journaling to your layouts? And if you do, do you put it on the front of your layout? Uh, just sort of fit it in with your design? Or do you put it on the back? Because I recently learned that a lot of people add their journaling to the back of the layout so it doesn't take away from the design, but you could still read it if you wanted to if you pull the layout out of the album. And I thought that was really curious because it never really occurred to me to put journaling on the back and I always put it on the front. Let me know what you think in the comments below guys. Until next time. Bye!